Hello, well in this film I'm going to talk about my skiving and splitting machine and show you how it works and have a bit of a talk about its capabilities, sorts of things you can do and about maintaining the sharpness of the blade. So I've got a lovely old Dixon machine and well let's, let's get going. Well here's my machine, it's an old Dixon and it's a splitter and skiver and perhaps just to quickly explain on that point you get two main types, you either get leather splitters which usually just have a fixed blade and you set the sort of blade distance from the roller here and you pull your lever through and you use it to thin a bit of leather. So just as an example here's a bit of bridle leather, four millimeter bridle leather. You could split that into two bits each two millimeters thick using a splitter. Now this machine as I say is a splitter and skiver so what the skiver does it can do like a tapered lap skive. So on a belt here, where you've got a buckle going onto a belt, you can very nicely thin the back of it so that it looks far neater and sits far more neatly on the waist. As it's thinner at the back, you thinned off the leather. I'll show you how I do this in a minute. But that's what I'm using it for. I'm using it to thin the back of belts just to get a nice fixing where the buckle goes and it makes it so much more professional to do what's called a lap skive. So the ones that can do the lap skives and split usually have to handle and that moves the roller position as you pull the lever through. So if that's what this one is, it's a splitter and skiver. Well the main bit of the machine is the, the blade. So this one has a four inch blade, underneath it is the brass roller which goes quite nicely. This bar in front is just a protection bar so it basically <laughs> stops you cutting your hands on the blade because it's obviously a very sharp blade and it just gives a little bit of protection. A couple of springs to sort of keep the roller nicely pressed against things and at the bottom here is an adjustment screw which changes the distance between the roller and the blade depending on what thickness of split or sky if you want to get and a lot of them they'll have adjustments either on the sides or on the top. Um, this one's not quite so common being on the bottom but um, there you are. Just a quick thing to say about the width. This is a narrow one at four inches. You can get them wider. Um, I, I'm only doing belts so I mean you know a one and a half inch belt that's plenty of space to play around with on that. If you want to say split leather for wallets you'd be wanting a six inch or an eight inch one. The, the only thing I would say is that with these pull through kind that if you're say splitting you know, heavy veg tan to make wallets then you're going to be stretching the lever as you pull it and it's going to take a huge amount of force. So it's not necessarily the best approach. You can get more sophisticated versions of these skivers which have double rollers and so sort of like gearing on the side and that actually pulls the lever through evenly rather than you having to do all the pulling you sort of crank it through and they're probably far better but they are obviously far more expensive and they're serious money but um, I would yeah just say a caution that if you're wanting it for something other than belts you are going to find you're going to pull the lever stretch it and slightly ripple it unless you have one of those really expensive ones but I say for what I'm doing making belts this is really good. Now blade sharpening you need to get that blade mega mega sharp and I actually spent two and a half hours when I got this machine just re-honing the blade with water stones to get it a nice flat back on here. It wasn't in bad condition but it's one of those things <laughs> if you've watched Hedge Laying Phil with his bill hook you'll know what I mean about sharpness. I think anyone who's been a woodworker or is a woodworker they like getting their tools sharp and I spent as I say about two and a half hours leveling off this blade and then sharpened it up. So you'll, you'll get different views as to how you best sharpen one of these blades. What I personally did was flattened off the back a bit like you would a plain blade, a woodworking plain blade, corrected this bevel to get it even the whole way down and then using a very very fine diamond hone I went down the front edge and just gave it two or three strokes on the front edge 
and then I stropped it with a leather strop. And all I did to make that up, it's, I always use this one, is a bit of wood and a bit of veg tan on top and then a bit of stropping compound which can be either white compound, yellow compound or green compound depending how vicious you want to be with your stropping. So I tend to use the white most of the time actually which is not quite so aggressive and just if you actually <laughs> little tip here you can hold the blade using one of the blade clamps hold the other end of it so you're not stressing it and just touch it down like that with your strop and do that both sides and you'll just get rid of any little tiny burrs and if you look at that under a microscope you'll have a lovely sharp blade the diamond hones I've been using, actually I think I've shown these before, probably in some of the spoon carving films, but um, these little packs of diamond ones are very good. You want what are called monocrystalline diamonds, so that's where they're the more expensive ones, it's where the diamonds are all the same height. If you go for the really cheap ones, um, they're not so good for precision work because the diamonds are all at very slightly different heights, but with these. So this one is, for example, a super fine, and that's, that's the one I used. So it's a diamond hone stone, and literally just touched it along. But that was, as I say, after I'd re-leveled this blade with a couple of hours plus of water stoning. Now some people say just sharpen your blade by flattening it underneath. Others say just sharpen it by just going along the top front edge. You will get different op opinions on all of this. As I say, what I've done, flattened the base, got that mirror flat, reprofiled the top edge so that's a consistent angle, and then I've gone over it with the diamond with a couple of strokes and with then the leather strop but that's my approach and it's worked well so um, that's what I do with the, the high quality woodworking tools and you will get a good cutting edge. Some people as a little tip as well, oh, can't do it quite so readily here, they put a, a felt tip pen line along the cutting edge and they just rub it until it's gone consistently. I mean I had as I say water stone this so I knew I'd got it flat but um, that's another little tip some people use. They just mark the whole edge with the pen, rub it with the sharpening stone or whatever, and then you can see where it's uneven. It's not perfect even after all that sharpening, but it's pretty good. So I'll pop that back in before I go and cut myself. You may also find with these old ones that you have to slightly level up the blade in the actual machine. So I have a tiny brass shim down underneath the blade at one end just to get the distance for the blade to roller consistent or fairly consistent. And if you are a refurbing machine as I was, things like the roller, it's worth really going to town cleaning out the channel that the roller sits in and greasing it up so that it runs nice and evenly and smoothly. You don't want it um, running unevenly and giving you a different thickness of cut. So all those little things to watch for. Anyway, let's, let's get cutting. So just to split a bit of leather, you put the nice shiny side against the brass roller. So I'm moving the handle forward to get the leather in. And then move the handle back to whatever depth you want. And then pull. Oops, need a bit more of a grip on here actually. And what happens is you, you basically get a nice slice off. That's the general idea. So that's thinned it. Now I say I'm not really using this for thinning. What I'm using it for is to um, do a tapered skive on the end of strap. So I'll do that next. So to do a tapered skive, I just feed the leather through and then give it a good old pull. And I'm moving the handle very slowly back at the same time. And that gives me a nice gentle taper there on the belt. And the idea will be with this, 
try and show you really need a buckle hole but um give you an impression oops you fix your buckle that's very crudely it and you get a nice sort of bit of leather that's thinning off the other side so you've not got two really thick bits of leather making the, the thing you know sit ugly on someone's waist it it makes your belt look slimmer so it's a nice quality finish to do that's it it gives you a very nice even cut down squeeze another fruit just give you a bit of a feel oops get it the right way so it's rough side flesh side uppermost and then pull And it's a bit of a sort of knack of pulling this lever back slowly, but again, you can see you get a very nice tapered sky fare. It's again giving you that nice tapered sky. Well, some of these work out a bit better than others, and it's takes a bit of practice really to get it really good I just if I don't get it quite right I just finish it off by hand slightly and go off afterwards which is quite easy there you are so that's tapered scythes and it is quick I mean it's far quicker than trying to use either a French skiving knife or one of these little knives. So if you've got a lot to do, it's a nice way of getting them through. Well, that's made quick work of the 15 belts here, and it's a very effective tool. If you have to do a lot of skiving, certainly recommend it. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching that one, and thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.